Okay, I cannot wait to see this. What do we have here? We are headed through the beautiful town of Canastota, New York, as we head towards the second day of the incredible Madison Bountiful Antique Festival. Let's head on over. Well, I found a garage sale along the way, so why don't we stop off here first? Here we go. So I really like this vintage cow to start off. It's only a dollar. It is discolored, but some of it can be cleaned off, like with the magic eraser. So <laughs> that's awesome. You can hear that it moves and it has a bell on the bottom. Uh, this actually was made by Kenner uh, in the 1970s. Uh, originally, it was uh, bright white uh, with some touch-up, cleaning it up a bit. Um, should be able to get about 40 for it. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but can't miss for a dollar. Holy cow, I've never seen more cow things in my life in one place. I mean, there's just a ton of it, right? Oh my gosh. It's awesome though, I love it. Very cool, oh really? Yeah. A lot of it sold? Yeah, we had three sales. Oh wow, all right. Yeah, there's lots of cool pieces. Very neat. A lot of them um, have like a vintage appearance though, so you have to be careful. Like, this is a good example. It looks vintage, right? But if you turn around, and then you can see it's got a UPC code on it. Um, you know, another example is this one here. It looks vintage, but when you turn it around, you can just tell from the back that it's relatively new. So those are like little things you could use to help you figure this out like here's another one you could see it has a vintage look to it but you turn it around and then you could see it's uh made in china so uh, i like this stuff but i'm gonna stick with the uh, cow that i got which i have down here right now and um i just wanted to show you because it's just really cool out here in the country to kind of things people collect all right time to move on This has long been considered the traditional first official stop off for the Madison Bountiful Antique Festival. You may remember from prior videos that I stop off here every year and have uh, purchased various cool things like those big lots of vintage bingo cards and stuff. So uh, we're going to take a look here and see what I find. All right, so inside the tent, uh, the books are five bucks a piece, which is usually more than I want to pay unless I really see something that stands out. Last time, actually, I did, but this time uh, I did not. Most of these are pretty beat up, don't have the dust jackets, and the ones that do, uh, those are not the ones that are really worth much. So we're gonna pass on that. Uh, you could see here they're asking $100 for the Fiesta wear. So I'm going to pass. Uh, things like Funko Pops are 10 bucks a piece. You really want to be at like 2 to 3 bucks on them. So I'm going to pass on that. Unless it was something super expensive, but these are pretty common ones. Hats you could see are 10 bucks. So uh, this is something I've pointed out uh, before to look for. Some of the cups by Teagle and Bradford are um, really good and could sell for good money. You could see here. There's the signature on the bottom by Bradford. It's a little bit faded. This dad one though is pretty common. You could get something like this for like 20 bucks on eBay and they want seven for it. So I'm gonna pass on it. But look for this uh, particular design in terms of facial features. It really will stand out to you when you see it. And there are some uh, that I've actually picked up at this um, antique show in the past that have sold for like 40, 50 bucks. So. Um, you know, just be on the lookout, try to get it for a lower price. All right, so this is really cool. I love this Santa Claus. Yeah. It's nice and vintage, and it's nice and sturdy as night. well. So if we, we look at the price here, it is $25. So 
I'm wondering if I could get it for a little bit less. Is there is there any flexibility on this price yeah. wise? Yeah, we can would ask you, her. She's the one at the Madison Inn. You want us to call her? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if she would do twenty bucks on it because it's twenty five right now. Okay, hold on. Yeah. All right. Come on, Santa. Give me some good luck here. Yeah, no problem. You want to come home with the primetime treasure hunter? <laughs> Tell her it's the primetime treasure hunter. I will. <laughs> <laughs> we have someone here, the primetime treasure hunter YouTuber, that would like to know if you do your composite Santa Claus for twenty dollars instead of twenty five. Yeah. The one, the head hanging right on the red cabinet, right across the The composite head Santa Claus. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Yes, she will. All right. We got a deal. Santa's coming home with prime time. All right. Let's go, Santa. All right. <laughs> excited this is a great purchase especially since christmas is right around the corner so i'm going to make this a priority to list uh the ladies there were awesome the name of the store is called the gingham patch uh they recognize me from prior years uh coming by here and it being the first stop off and uh they also um recognize me through uh the crazy lamp lady posting on social media and saying that we were uh, hanging out here today so uh that's interesting and um yeah, it's just a great time. And, you know, I always find something here, even though there are some things that are, you know, priced higher than I would want for reselling purposes. Uh, those prices could be perfectly acceptable for someone who just wants to buy something for themselves. And even for reselling purposes, I, you know, like I said, find something every year. And I always find that they're willing to negotiate on price. So that's a, another good thing. You know, one of the reasons that I really like this besides that it's Christmas and Santa Claus is because it's 18 inches long. That's pretty difficult to find for this make and model. Normally when you come across this one, it's going to be the 12 inch version. It has a maximum width of 13 inches. I take a measuring tape with me uh, so that I can make these kind of measurements, which is important when checking comps because the 12 inch version, that one go for like 50, 60, $70. But being that this one is so large, I'm gonna price this one at 100 and we'll see what happens. And one other tip I could pass on to you has to do with the eyes. When they're hand painted eyes like this, make sure when you're comparing to other ones on the market that you look to see if that could be a differentiator because sometimes if the eyes are more of a, like a longer ovally type of shape, it can make Santa not look quite as jolly and friendly. So depending on how it's done, that can make you price yours higher than the others. All right, so I just got parked at the actual field for the Antique Fest, so we're gonna get out and explore and uh, hit up some areas that I didn't uh, get to go to yesterday and see what adventures await. All right, just in case you're curious, I am triple stacked with boxes today. Uh, they nest within one another, and this is really helpful when I am uh, traveling around and walking all over the place uh, because stuff accumulates pretty quickly. I really like this Budweiser oval sign. I'm not sure how much it costs. It's definitely vintage. You could just tell that, you know, from the back, but let's see how much it costs. So they just told me the price on this is $25. Uh, I'm gonna pass because, you know, the best I could hope to get for it with shipping on eBay would be $35. And I could find stuff like this out of state sales for a couple bucks. So gonna pass. All right. Well, you know, I like signs, especially double-sided signs and vintage signs. And this one looks really cool. And I'm actually in a booth that I stopped in yesterday with uh, Jocelyn. And uh, we met uh, Steve from Brickhouse Salvage. 
and antique, so he does the salvage work and he finds these things here and there. Now they got everything at 20% off today, so actually they're willing to do a little better, uh, so I can get the sign for 10. So I'm definitely gonna pick this up. I, I love it, and I like how it also has like the metal uh, on the side and the corner there. On, on both corners and you know, it's wood it's painted it's really cool and um this is steve from brick house and uh hey how are you doing man i'm doing good so i was hearing a little bit of the story of how you got into this if you wouldn't mind sharing like how this business developed total accident okay <laughs> <laughs> i retired and decided to start selling stuff okay yeah, yeah. from from salvaging Victorian homes or what well, kind of homes I used to work in Victorian homes okay I'd remodel them okay and uh, just got out of it okay 28 years of remodeling homes right is enough but while you were remodeling them you, you would come across things right and Tons say like I'm not gonna throw this in the garbage I might as well sell it right I'm too cheap right you know? so a, a basically a reselling business evolved out of finding these things here and there it's snowballed it's snowballed and, and, I, I, <laughs> And, and, and you have a, I heard you have a 15,000 square foot barn yeah. where you keep the stuff. It's basically an airplane hangar. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. It's oh my God. steel dairy barn. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, that would be incredible to see. And that's, where is that now? In Smithville Flats, New York. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So is that open to the public? Do they yeah. come in? Every weekend. I'll okay. Every weekend. All right. Weekdays by appointment. Okay. I've got a ton of YouTube videos out there. Where do people find you on YouTube and TikTok? I heard you're on TikTok too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Brick House Salvage and Antiques. Okay. Best way to find me is to Google me. Okay. And all my links will come up. From all right. eBay to Etsy, you can find awesome. me. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to link to it in the description, everyone. So definitely go give Steve a follow. He's an awesome guy. Again, we, we met yesterday, and uh, I'm glad to be able to pick something up from him. So thanks, Steve. Appreciate it, Tom. All right. My pleasure. Have a good one. All right. Well, Steve really is an amazing guy. He gave me the sign on the house, so I didn't even have to pay anything for it. I did insist several times that he let me pay for the sign, but he was very insistent that I take it as an expression of thanks because he's been watching the channel for many years and has really enjoyed it. So I'm deeply appreciative of the kindness of so many people uh, in the reselling community. And again, uh, go check out Steve. Great guy. Hey, Prime Time. Why don't you come over here and have a seat? <laughs> okay, maybe I will. <laughs> Gosh. Feels pretty comfy. <laughs> so it turns out that this is actually about 30 years old and it is signed on the back by the artist Kathleen Callahan. And uh, the price on it is 1500 along with the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So um, apparently there was another one done in the past, not of these two. Who was the other person who was? Uh, Warhol. It was Andy Warhol. Yeah, that sold for 4000 So uh, the person selling these does not expect them to last uh, too much longer. So really cool pieces I just wanted to show you. Yeah, no, I found four yesterday and they were complete. I mean, and they even had like a basket filled with like um, corn in it and stuff. It was really neat. So, yeah, but these are also very interesting. Yeah, and they're also from, uh, well, actually, it looks like these are from Staten Island, New York on the bottom. It says art crafts, but I don't know, maybe this one. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, the ones yesterday I had... It sure does say made in Mexico. Uh, right? Made in Mexico, yeah. yeah. But for some yeah. So I guess it, they contract out with the village people oh, company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, very say, cool. Yeah, so how interesting that I came across those figures today after finding four of them yesterday for just five bucks a piece. They wanted $25 per figure. But one of the reasons that the guy sold them to me for five bucks a piece yesterday is because he thought they were cursed because he found them in a hoarder house and he just wanted to get rid of them. He thought they had some bad juju, but sometimes people thinking that it's bad juju could be good for you, you. My goodness, I have never seen this before. Look at the size of this Pepsi sign. That is absolutely incredible. It really combines two things I love a lot. Pepsi and old Western scenes painted by Van Orden. 
I don't even know what the price is on this, but it's got to be over $1,000. I mean, this is the type of stuff that if I had a brick and mortar store, it really reminds me of like American Pickers. I would love to source this type of stuff. Who knows, you know, maybe when I retire and get like a big gigantic barn or something like that, that I could start picking up these types of items. But like you could see here, this sign right here with the Texaco, that's $350, not 35 bucks. Uh, these types of signs, you know, they run hundreds of dollars and you know, he's just got tons of them he loads them up in this big truck here you can see it says coca-cola some of them have the reflections on it i mean it's just really cool amazing stuff so it's just incredible wow one of the other things i really like about being over here is that you could actually go outside people's houses and find all sorts of stuff you can see even stuff goes back there you can explore and i just found this sticking out here which is really cool i'm thinking that this could be marketed to somebody who likes boats because it says all port so i would emphasize port and this is a real street sign question is how much is it so let's see what's the price on this sign here No. 25? 20. 20. I'd take 25. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Would you do 10 on it? 10? How much am I going to make it in front of $10? I don't know what you got it for. 18. I was going to say, uh, all right. Thanks anyway. That's all right. You know, it was a little bit of a stretch anyway, but I figured I'd try. <laughs> Thank you. One of my favorites for lunch, Philly cheesesteak. So something is drawing me to this oil painting. It's just very interesting. Just the look of the mother with the baby. It just kind of fascinating to me. And the interesting thing is down here, you can see there is a signature and it dates back to 1956. So it doesn't have a price on it. I mean, it has vintage framing. I'm very curious how much they want for this. So let's uh, let's find out. How much? How much is this? Does this have a price? This, yeah, I don't see 20, a price on it. Twenty. It is an original. Uh, it's mine. So it's yours. Mine. Yeah. I uh, believe it's in this. Yeah. Part of somebody's art collection. Yeah. Um, so that's a deal. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, I've been saying that uh, I keep trying to get into more art. And so, you know, since Steve was so generous before and gave me that sign for nothing and I was going to pay 10 bucks for it, I was hoping to get this for maybe 15 or 10, but I'll just apply that savings to this and I'll pay the 20 for it. It just, I don't know, there's just something about it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something you would be interested in picking up and what do you think i might be able to get out of this hmm. if you know anything about the artist let me know yeah so i figured that someone who's interested in more melancholy type of art might be interested in something like this worst case someone probably would purchase this vintage frame on facebook marketplace you know and i can get my money back if this doesn't pan out but uh, i'm thinking that it will so uh, just a general tip if there's something you're interested in purchasing uh, that you see in one of the videos and it's not in my ebay store yet then just reach out to me at primetimetreasure at gmail.com so i sent a picture of this to mrs primetime just to see what she thought and she actually really liked it i thought that she was gonna hate it but she actually was like wow that is super cool and she said something interesting she said you know with those colors with the orange and the brown and the black she goes you have to get that listed now for halloween because we're in august you know so it's not too far away and she also said that you know she could see someone who is like really into like gothic uh, type of art liking this so lots of possibilities and uh good pointers from mrs pt hey everyone so i have an update this has officially sold i did some more research and i was able to make out the name of the artist which is paul k freeman so it turns out that paul k freeman is actually from new york he was born in brooklyn which is 
where I was born. And uh, he was born in 1929, lived to 1980. So with this piece being dated 1956, it makes sense. There's uh, other information on pieces of his that have sold over the years. He used to just sign his name as Freeman in some of the older pieces from like 1960s and onwards. And this is one of his earliest known pieces where he apparently used his first name and middle initial. Uh, so it's one of his earliest known works and uh, it was fun to get this one listed on eBay. I started it at an auction for $150 and I had a couple bidders and it sold for $177.50. Not bad for a $20 investment. That's why I'm starting to move more and more into investing and dabbling in art pieces and it's paying off. And because of that, you're gonna see me start doing that more and more and more in future sales. So I'm inside of this tent and everything on this table is a dollar. Most of it is some type of damaged ephemera, magazines, a lot of things with the covers off. But, uh, hey, Peloton, why don't you look under here? What's that? Over here. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. What do we have here? Oh, there we go, there we go. So, <laughs> the reason why this was put into this pile is because uh, you have this page here that's separated, but... Yeah. It does look to be complete, and someone will still buy it, even though it has the page being separated, because you know the fellas, the fellas are gonna love stuff like this. Not only the drawings, but you also have the actual real pictures. So something like this, 1968. This will go for probably around 20 bucks or so. So I'm gonna pick it up for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. And yes, they do have Mad Magazines here, but they are pretty beat up. Like you could see here, there's tape, you know, it's putting the cover together. So I have so many Mad Magazines from this time frame. I'm really not trying to find ones right now that have that kind of damage on them. So was there anything you could tell me about this piece? Just where you got it or? It's uh, newer. Yeah. Uh, this was in it. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I did see that wrong. And uh, there's a lot of this other stuff. There was a... Uh, some t huh. I got it at an auction and they had all this... It just had a bunch of stuff in it? When you say newer, they're, they're, though... I should have brought the picture. There's some type of a... They had that globe there. Yeah. That globe right there. Okay. Uh, right. They had this uh, tree type thing. Yeah. And with all of this stuff around it. Okay. And I, I don't know. And they had a lot of oriental uh, yeah. picture, pictures and right. things like that. They were just, just what they liked. Yeah. Okay. And would you do 10 on it? I would do 10 on it. Okay. You, that was in it if you want. It. Um, you don't have sure. to Sure. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll take Some it. It's kind of sparkly. So, sure. Absolutely. Take Thank you. you. All right. it. Yeah, um, it's you cool. For that and some um, yeah, if you don't mind, just so I can protect it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. So it's very interesting that he said it was newer and that's why I think he priced it as he did. But you could tell from looking at it and just feeling it, this is definitely a vintage piece. I mean, it is really cool. I'd say that this goes back to the 70s or 60s. And uh, for $10, I just couldn't pass it up. I love nautical things. Almost looks like a Viking ship in a way, but I'll have to look up the name of the ship, you know, specific to the culture. So, um, and then Bowley Grow will get a kick out of this because Bowley Grow, he follows the channel and he's a geologist. So he would get a kick out of this. Uh, I think it's a little piece of amethyst uh, based on what I'm seeing on the bottom. But these sparkly pieces are interesting. I don't know if these were added to it afterwards or what, but uh, yeah, let me know in that comment section. I have not looked this up at all to see, you know, what something like this might sell for, but uh, who knows, maybe I'll get into rock selling now. So I took the price sticker off of this and just really wanted to highlight this storage container area. 
I suppose you could use this as an ashtray. It's at least one keyword that you could use. Uh, another tip that Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady gave me is that, you know, if you have any doubts, uh, you could say something like, you know, succulents, like you could put like a succulent in here, uh, for example. So, uh, you know, just another pointer, figured I'd pass these things along and hopefully to help people, but I'm real excited about this piece. I think it's super cool. All right, we are about to meet a legend, the one and only Mike Lord. <laughs> Why do, you, why do people say legend? Stop it. Just saying fat, jovial guy. The legend much, much of, of Brimfield. So if you've gone over to Brimfield, you probably know this John name. John right is here. a legend. He's the one who had me. John's been there much longer. Johnny, say hi. Hey, what's going on? Papa. <laughs> How you doing? A lot of people are going to make some comments who, who recognize you here. But, um, yeah, I was uh, looking around here, and I heard a rumor that you are auctioning something off big tonight. I am, and I, I don't know if I should be doing it, I, but I, I am. I, I want to hear about it, I want to see it, and I, I just haven't found it. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I heard it's a picture. Well, I've hidden it. So You've hidden it? So that the public cannot touch it, okay. Okay. smell it, you know, who knows. All but, right, so okay. this is this is big time, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, actually, can... it's, no, it's actually a no-joke photograph. Okay, I cannot wait to see this. What do we have here? So what we have here. Ooh. Now, it's a little loose. I've taken the nails out so that I can show the back of the photo to uh, okay. a people. But oh. I'll turn it over here. And I'll sign. just show you first, maybe get in and, and, and take a look at what you're actually looking at here. Okay. All right. That is from the U.S. There, it says USS. It looks like it's USS Maine, right? Okay, so now this photograph was taken uh, at the end of 1897, I believe. Uh, and they had just won. Uh, the Naval Championship. So that was all the Naval teams played each other and they were the top right. winners. And they they, they beat, uh, I can't remember the name of the team, but they beat somebody 18 to four and won the championship. Okay. Now, this gentleman right here, uh, African-American gentleman, yep. very, very, uh, you didn't see that back in 1898. Right. Okay, right. now he was their star pitcher. And uh, this gentleman right here uh, was their right fielder. Now the thing about this photograph is, about a month and a half, two months after this photograph was taken, the USS Maine was sunk. Right. Um, and every single member of this team went down uh, oh with, my God. With, with that. And that, that actually sparked uh, the Spanish-American War. That's right. Uh, this, this incident sparked the uh, Spanish-American War. So I actually believe that this is quite a piece of history. Now, that is amazing. You see the goat right there. You see the USS Maine flag, <laughs> flag draped on draped on him. I yeah, mean, yeah. He su and I've heard rumors that he actually survived. The goat survived. That he swam ashore. Now I don't know if I, I can't. I can't guarantee that. But if you read right. some of the uh, documentation, I okay. Flip it over. All right. This is a story you have. Yeah, I knew it was a good sign when I saw writing on the back. Photo of USS Maine battleships baseball team blown up in Havana Harbor in 1898 to start Spanish American War. Found an old homestead of, what is that? Maxim Taro Sr. That's the name of the, okay. 1867 to 1946, a veteran of that war. Oh, wow. He lived at 320 Oak Street, Franklin, Massachusetts. So did you find us through like an, an, an estate buyout or something? So I'm a professional antique dealer. what I do for a living. Okay. I've, I'm, I'm always at antique shows and okay. markets and, and whatnot. And I've been looking okay. for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, I actually came across this at a, a, a small country antique show. Um, I had some pottery and some crocs and some, some other yeah. things, and I looked down, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right. he went in and he showed me. And it's, it's not a piece I stole. It wasn't a piece I got for like 50 right. bucks or 100 bucks or something right. like that. I actually paid real money for it because I, right. I, I knew what it was. And now, the thing about this is, um, they did make a, a cabinet card, which is a little smaller than this. Okay. And you can come across it. Believe it or not, that little cabinet card by itself, which I won't say is common, but you can yeah. find it, um, brings between eight, uh, excuse me, four to eight hundred dollars. Wow! So definitely, yeah, treasure hunters be on the lookout for that. Now, for I've sure. never seen—I mean, I've never seen another one of these offered. Right. Um, I've I, anywhere. I've done. My, we, my father has been in Sports Collectors Digest. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we've been doing this since uh, the '70s, um, and I'm always looking for this kind of stuff. I've never seen it, heard of it. Right. Um, no, apparently, uh, an auction, uh, one of the, uh, an example of these that didn't have the writing down here, uh, that went for about twenty-five hundred dollars about twenty-five years ago. Wow. I sh now. Am I stupid? Should I be doing a, uh, an auction in the floor of a casino at night <laughs> on a Facebook group? 
Probably not, but I think that, I have a pretty good, strong crowd to get there. That is correct. So for those interested by this story and hearing about your Facebook group and your legendary status, where should people go if they want to take part in your Facebook group auctions? So go ahead and search Brim, uh, excuse me, uh, Facebook groups. Yep. You want to look for Brimfield Online. Okay. That's B R M. Excuse me, I can't B R I M, right? B R I M Field. That's all right. Um, <laughs> And again, there's going to be a whole bunch of Brimfield groups. But what you want is just Brimfield online. Okay. Um, I'm going to link to it in the description section for those who are interested. And definitely go over and say you came from Primetime Treasure Hunter. And uh, tell Mike you said hi. And you know, check out his auctions. Cause yeah, come on by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the auction at 9 o'clock sharp. Okay. And I'm going to open the room for about 10 minutes. Let it right. populate. Uh, right about 9, 10, I'll start the auction. And okay. uh, I might even start it for a dollar and go. Oh, my God. Oh my god! How often do, do you do these auctions? I kind of do crazy stuff just to uh, promote my my page. I want to promote Bachville. <laughs> right. Um, this is what I do, and uh, you know what? Uh, if you're not if you're not taking a risk in this business, then you're not living. So I agree. You're not working. I agree. How often are the auctions? Uh, I it depends. It depends. I, I sell all the time on there. Okay. The page sells all the time. All right. Uh, but it's just. It all depends. I like to put special things that you don't get really a shot to buy all that often. Yeah. That, like that, you're not going down to the corner thrift shop and buying this off the wall. So. That, that qualifies, and I can't wait to see what that goes for. So, uh, so am I. <laughs> I'm actually just privileged to just see it, and I appreciate you taking it out of a special hiding spot to show me. So, Well, dude, I really appreciate you coming by. I yeah. mean, uh, it, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. It's nice to meet you. I, I think I've watched you. Like I said, I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to finally meet then when worlds collide, right? Yes, sir. All right, Mike. Thank you so much. Brother, thank you. Appreciate it. It's all of a sudden gotten pretty chilly and the clouds are darkening, the wind is picking up, and we are likely going to get some rain, which is gonna shut things down for a bit. Wow, yeah, this is really getting a little crazy and people are scurrying to their cars. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm gonna head out. The rain is starting to come down. I'm gonna grab some dinner with Jocelyn, the crazy lamp lady. Let me know what your favorite items were that I found today or ones that I just looked at and didn't buy. That USS Main thing was incredible, but let me know what you like the best. I'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care. Daisy, Gizmo, it's Gizmo, it's Gizmo. <laughs> Gizmo!